first, I want to say happy birthday, Ashlyn. It's my daughter's birthday today, and she blessed me with a beautiful readings of the scripture. And I like in the scripture where it says, I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. Can you think of a time in your life where you prayed and prayed and prayed about something and then finally God answered that prayer? Just have that in your mind for a minute as we think about this persistent conversational prayer. Because seven years ago, I was contemplating uh, whether or not I wanted to move to Mississippi to join the diocese that my brother was preaching in. We called them districts. Uh, and I was just going to the Lord 24-7 about this prayer. I was really seeking the Lord's guidance. Just, I was trusting in the fact uh, that what God says is true about how he'll answer prayer. I love in Luke 10 or 11, 10 where it says, For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be open. Let me tell you, when I was praying over that, I was asking. I was seeking. And I was knocking. And as I was doing this, I felt led to go ahead and go out to Mississippi and respond to a possible interview. So I went to a church and I said, you know, Lord, if you want me to move out here, help, help this interview to go well, help everything to go smooth. Let them offer me this job. Well, I got back to Florida and lo and behold, they called and they offered me the job. Well, you know, I was a little skeptical still. <laughs> so I was like, okay, Lord, you know, moving is huge. Moving my whole family from Florida to the Mississippi is huge. If you really want me to do this, then um, help me sell my house. And so kind of jokingly, I went into my garage, and I had this old for sale sign from another house I sold. And I went outside, and I just wrote with ink on it what I wanted to get for it. And I stuck it in the ground. I nailed it down. And um, I walked in. Later that day, there's this knock on the door. Yeah, I want to check out your house. I was like... Okay, come on in. So they came in, they looked around, and before they left, gave me a check for the deposit. I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> I'm ready to go. All right, I'm, I'm ready to go. And so with that, I really felt like God had answered my prayer in such a decisive way, and I had been praying so hard over it. And really, that's the same thing that happened with me here uh, when I decided to come from Mississippi to Holy Communion in Bend. Well, it's all about conversational prayer. And in our reading today, we see how Abraham was kind of getting into this conversational prayer with God. And I love this reading because what we learn about Sodom is that the sin was so great that it, it had risen up to God and God was going to destroy the whole city. And what do we learn here? Something interesting. I love what the book says in Genesis eighteen thirty two. But Abraham persisted. Please do not let my Lord be angry. If I speak up this last time... What if ten are found there? For the sake of ten, he replied, I will not destroy it. And it's amazing what we learn here. And I want you to hear this. This is really important. Because within God's will, there's space for God to change his immediate plan to take into consideration our prayers and to answer them. I want to repeat that, right? Within God's will, there is space for God to change his immediate plan to accommodate our prayers and to answer our prayers. And that's huge because God was going to destroy the entire city of Sodom. And sometimes we worry, like, is, you know, what's, what's America come to? But we find here that through the prayers of one man, Abraham, God was going to be willing to spare in his mercy that whole city for the sake of just 10 righteous people. So yes, we have hope. Amen. Well, I love that. And we have to remember that it's Abraham's prayer that opened up that possibility. And what I loved about the gospel reading is that Jesus gives us this example that even adds more to what we learn about prayer. So Jesus is talking about how God responds to prayer. And he tells the story of this guy that goes to his neighbor's house. And let me tell you, if you come to my house in the middle of the night after I get my kids asleep, this might be the way you get your bread. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the, the beautiful thing is, I don't think that when we're persistent with our prayers, when God finally answers them, I don't think he shows them down our throat. See, God is merciful. And uh, he's just. Uh, but ongoing persistence is the key. In, in Luke eleven eight, 8, Jesus said, I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And Jesus is teaching us that it's never a waste 
to keep going and to keep going to God for that prayer. Now, maybe there's a prayer you've been praying for a really long time. And maybe this morning, I want you to just think of that one prayer that you've almost given up on. You've almost given up praying this prayer. You've been praying it for a long time. And I just want to encourage you this morning. Because what I feel God's word is saying is that he wants us to continue to pray. He wants your faith to be renewed. He wants your prayers to be risen again. He wants you to continue with that prayer. Make that appeal through the prayer team. Make that appeal through the pastor, through the bishop. Make that appeal through your patron saint. Make that appeal through St. Jude, the saint of hopeless causes. Make that appeal through the Blessed Mary, through St. Joseph. Make that appeal through our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Maybe today, maybe this week is the week that that prayer you gave up on is going to be answered by God. So keep praying and keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And this is the place I got to when I looked at the Lord's instructions and I said, you know, we should take the Lord's prayer and make it our conversational prayer throughout the week. That's what we should do uh, because the Lord's Prayer is the perfect prayer. So whether we're going through our busy day at, on the lake or whether we're working in our garden, and by the way, the kids did such an awesome job on, in Rose Speck's garden, or, or whether we're busy at work or whatever, let's make the Lord's Prayer our conversational prayer, right? So, so let's talk through it, right? Hallowed be thy name, all right? You know, when you catch that tiny little fish on the crooked river, hallowed be thy name. We got to be thankful for that. I'm going to tell you something. It looks really nice on this. <laughs> it looks really big. But I was very thankful to catch that fish. But here's the interesting thing about that fish. Okay, when you pray, it reminds me of this. Be specific. Okay, I was all week long. I'm like, when I go to the crooked river, just let me catch one fish, Lord. Be specific with your prayers. Amen. But then, you know, when you're saying, give us this day our daily bread, and you're being thankful for that food, you know, I was cleaning the fish that my son caught. The first one on a fly rod was that weekend. And as I was cleaning that fish, and as we were going to eat that fish, let me tell you something. I was so thankful for the daily bread that God was giving us in such a special way. We can bring the Lord's Prayer in that way. When our dog, Draco, chases the cat around our legs for that last time in the morning during our morning prayers <laughs> we can say lord help us to forgive those who trespass against us even if it's a dog that's trying to get in your garden and ruin your roses <laughs> right for, help us to forgive those who trespass against us in all these special ways we can take the lord's prayer and we can make it our daily conversation and then when we do that look out and see how awesome our God is at answering our conversational prayer.